Hey, it's Andrew with UI6 Vids, and in today's episode, we have a full review of the Desert Tech HTI 50 Cal. I've utilized this rifle in a few videos already, shooting things in slow motion and blowing things up if you want to check out those types of videos. Links will be in the description as well. We'll be talking about all the specs and all the details about this rifle in this video, but if you want to skip forward to seeing the accuracy parts of this video, you can click the link in the description for a timeline jump. You can't get the way this looks from Desert Tech. This was a custom Cerakote job by my friends at Fall River Arms in Meridian, Idaho. They did a fantastic job. I'm calling it Patriot in the Night. It's a design I've wanted for a long time and they knocked it out of the park. I wanted to add a little customization to it, a little flair for you guys in the video, but it does not affect the rifle in any aspect. It's mainly just beautiful. With an overall length of 45 inches with the 375 shy tack and the 408 shy tack, but 45.75 inches of overall length with the 416 Barrett or the 50 BMG. There's a slight change in weight as you go from caliber to caliber, but for the most part, it's staying right around that 20 pound mark. So right now we have this rifle system in 50 BMG, which is obviously a very popular round. Definitely putting a wallop on the target downrange and has extreme accuracy out to long ranges but it comes in other big bore rifle calibers as well. All you have to do is swap the barrel, the bolt, and the magazine, and you can swap from 375 shy tack, 408 shy tack, 416 Barrett, or the 50 BMG. Easy to swap from caliber to caliber. You unlock the screw right here, you loosen the four screws here, the barrel comes out on the back side of the stock, you push this detent down, butt pad slides to the side, bolt comes out, you swap the bolt, disconnect the magazine, Swap the magazine, put the new bolt back in, close the butt pad, put new barrel in, tighten all four of these screws down to 80 inch pounds, lock the system with the back lug, and you're good to go. Now Desert Tech claims that you are going to be able to hold a zero as you're swapping barrels. Well, I only have one 50 cal barrel, so I can't test that theory, but they say it is extremely solid and allows you to return to zero even when you're swapping from barrel to barrel. Now granted as you swap from different calibers the point of impact is going to shift and you're going to have to kind of re-evaluate where your point of impacts are at different ranges. If you're transporting the system and you want to take the barrel out to make it more compact for a backpack or mitigating the overall size of the gun, when you put the barrel back into it and lock it down, the return to zero should be spot on. Now this is something I want to test in another video because it's a little long-winded, but I want to have different calibers to test out to see how it transitions uh, with different calibers. If it's not just one barrel that's returned to zero, but all four of the calibers with this big bore system. Now other than the HTI platform, Desert Tech has other rifles we might look into in the near future if you like this video that shoot smaller caliber rifle rounds, and they also have semi-automatic rifles that shoot 5.56, 300 blackout, and so on and so forth. I really want to get my hands on those and test the reliability of the semi-automatic platform. Bolt actions are pretty tried and true, and as long as they're built right, you can't go wrong. We have different rounds over here. These are the Hornady AMAX match grade ammunition. Desert Tech claims that these are the best rounds to use through it for accuracy downrange. That's what we're going to be using today for our 100-yard test and our 500-yard test. These things are loaded very well. We also have regular FMJ rounds when you want to just start freaking sending giant chunks of bowling ball lead downrange and causing mayhem, these things do the job very well. And also I've found that even some of the cruddier factory load FMJs are fairly accurate, so I want to test them out to see what the difference is between these and the AMAX rounds in today's accuracy test. Also we have some A-PIT rounds. Now A-PIT stands for Armor Piercing Incendiary Tracers. These are fun. Click the link in the video to see a video with the HTI shooting the A-Pit rounds at steel in slow motion, and you'll get an idea of how much power is coming out of this rifle. Now, the attachments I have on this rifle for today's video, we do have the Viper PST from Vortex Optics. It has a quick throw lever on it, which allows for adjusting for overall magnification and a bubble level. Bubble levels are huge for long range accuracy. If you're not level on your rifle when you're shooting long range, when you make adjustments, you're going up and left, or down and right, or low and left, or up and right. It's, you can be all over the place. So being level when you're making adjustments at the long ranges is key. Now up front, we do have the Atlas 5H bipod. This bipod is designed for big bore calibers or fully automatic fire. It allows you to adjust the overall cant of the gun. It also allows you to swivel left and right as well. The 5H bipod's key for this test because you want to have it to where it is not going to fall apart. People go cheap on their bipods and one day it's going to really come back to bite you because if that bipod breaks when you're putting forward pressure on it, 
Yeah. The last thing you want to do is rip off a round right in front of you into the dirt. It could cause some serious injury or serious damage to your gun. And the 5H is designed for big bore heavy punching rifles like the HTI 50 cal. One of my favorite things of long range is being able to utilize a monopod on the backside of the gun. Now the HTI has a built-in monopod. Say you're down here like this, barrel's too high and you want to adjust, you pick the gun up a little bit, find your elevation inside your optic and you push down right here and that instantly deploys onto whatever platform you're at and gives you a rough estimate of level. And then you use left and right turns or clockwise, counterclockwise of the monopod and that'll give you your micro adjustments. Squeeze bags and sandbags are great, but no one wants to carry around a sandbag or a squeeze bag if you're humping a rifle to a location. The entire top section of the rifle is Picatinny rail so you can put attachments on it. You also have Picatinny rail attachment points on the handguard of the rifle and four quick detach sling mounts up front and two in the rear. The barrel is 29 inches overall. It is a stainless fluted barrel. It is bullpup so you're looking at the barrel coming back to about here in the action of the gun and allows you to have that short compact look and feel but still have 29 inches of barrel for better accuracy. That's the point of a bullpup. Rifles have harmonics. When the barrel has a round going through it, the vibrations cause a wiggle in the barrel, but not to interfere with because if you bump it or if you lay your rifle onto something, you're going to throw your shot off down range. So having a free floated system is very key. There is no section where it touches inside this handguard. Now back here, they do have five inches of overall contact points in their locking system. Because it's a quick detach barrel system, they have those screws and five inches of overall pressure pushing down on that barrel, which helps for less muzzle whip when you're shooting and that harmonics is actually improved, which gives you better accuracy downrange from what Desert Tech is saying. Now Desert Tech is claiming that this rifle with the AMAX ammunition is getting sub MOA groups or guaranteed MOA groups out to 100 yards. Uh, it claims to be very accurate out to 2,000 plus yards as well. Uh, I want to put that to the test in another video when we have more fun and more time to do that. Uh, if you want to see me shoot this thing out to 2,000 yards, I think it'd be a blast. It's a lot of work. 2,000 yards is a long way. And even a one MOA group out to 2,000 yards, you're looking at a 20 inch pattern. Okay, so 2,000 yards, one MOA group, you have 20 inches of overall natural travel while it's still being accurate. Not to mention environmental changes and human error. So there's a lot of things that come into play when you're shooting out to that range. And I think we should dedicate an entire video to shooting out from 1,000 to 2,000 yards. Let me know if you want me to do that. I can use different rifles as well, not just the HTI. Leave a comment in the comment section. It's always a good way of contacting me and let me know what you guys like and what you think. The muzzle brake is Desert Tech patent pending. It allows for great mitigation of gases to the left and right hand side. Keeping it away from the round as it leaves the barrel gives you better accuracy as well. We also have a match grade trigger. You can adjust this trigger down to one pound. So one to three pounds adjustable. I like this trigger a lot. It's very crisp, but the one thing I don't like about the trigger right out of the box, um, I have shot this rifle before. It's not like I haven't shot it before. So I do know some things with it right out of the gate. Uh, safety off. When the trigger breaks, it is very light and it is very crisp. There's a spongy play on the back side. It's not hitting a wall. This one has some slop on the back side of it. So that little bit of extra pull when the gun goes off can slightly shift you very, very slightly during that small amount of time the bullet is leaving the barrel. It, it comes down to that, especially at long ranges. So having a solid wall on the back side, I think would be an improvement, um, but this is adjustable from one to three pounds. And I do like the trigger. I just don't like that slop at the back side. Now, HTI is utilizing a telescopic bolt. In order to access the bolt, there's a section back here. You just pull back on it. Butt pad slides to the left or the right hand side. No problem, very easy. You move this butt pad to the side, bolt comes directly out. Pop it to the back side, slide it down, lock it in, slide that butt pad back up and you're good to go. The safety in this rifle is very easy. It's right above where your natural placement of your trigger finger would be, so you don't have to move around a lot. Forward is fire, back is safe, and it's ambidextrous, both left and right hand side. Butt pad on this rifle, you can adjust in half inch increments. There's a sections on the back side that you can swap out and add half inch increments for shorter or longer length of pull for depending upon how big or small the shooter is. Uh, the pad is not super, super, absorbent of recoil. When you're shooting 50 cal, you're going to feel it. I don't care what type of pad you have. You can put a whole couch cushion and you're going to get kicked, uh, especially with something this light and this short. The cheek plate on this rifle is adjustable. You can raise it up or down to fit your knees however you want to actually line yourself up, cheek well behind that optic. And I do like the fact there's a grip section right on the bottom of the rifle right there. So as you're carrying this thing, it's very easy to pick up and it's center balance, which is nice. You also can pop this thing over your shoulder and carry it around just like this and it's easy. So super lightweight 
and compact. So if you had to hump this somewhere, if you didn't have a sling, just holding like this is very comfortable. All right. Other than the slop on the backside of the trigger, the only issue I have with this rifle system so far is the magazine. This magazine is kind of cumbersome. Now, even with the bolt back or forward, it doesn't matter to me. It's, I'm having the issue either way. Level it perfectly, slap it in, make sure it seats properly, or else you'll have this kind of wonky seating. And you gotta make sure that you place rounds in perfectly and seat them and make them flush because any motion can have that follower stick and then you're dead in the water. You know, when you're in the moment, you don't wanna be dealing with rounds not feeding and having to take your mag out and look around and pat at it and make a bunch of motion that you don't wanna be making, especially if you're military or law enforcement. Let's see if their claim to one MOA guaranteed or slightly sub MOA grouping holds true using the Hornady AMAX round. Then we're moving out to 500 yards. All right. Let's do another shot. Same spot. Nice. All right. Don't want to eat my own words, but bullet on bullet, I'll take it. That is awesome. All right. Yeah. Yeah, I'll take that. Ah, not good for you, but it's most delicious. So very, very tight group. That is a half MOA group, if not smaller. I like it. Let's do three more shots again with the AMAX ammo to see if it's consistent. All right, three more rounds. Let's go for that small, lower sticky. All right. A little high on that one. Yeah. Here's my, here's my ammo. Uh, yep. Almost, yeah, pretty much bullet on bullet, or I should say touching. Get that one out of there. And another clover. Uh, not quite a clover, but still. I like that a lot. With a 50 cal, that's incredible. Now let's see if this holds that same accuracy out to 500 yards. Slight wind shift, and you can actually see it in the spotting scope, the heat vapor coming off the ground because of how hot it is today. That definitely throws your shot a little bit. Let's quickly do a group with FMJs to see, let's quickly do a, before we move out to 500 though, let's quickly do a three shot group on that lower sticky target. Uh, see how the FMJ's uh, regular ball ammunition does for accuracy compared to the AMAX rounds from Hornady. So, three rounds, FMJ. Let's see how this, uh, there it is. See how this fares. Let's go for the uh, lower sticky target again. The point of impact shift on these is gonna be different because the grain weight's different. Uh, loads different and it's definitely not match ammunition. So I'm guessing it's gonna hit low from where the AMAX hit. Yeah, just low, low and left. That one out. Uh, just lower than that one. Got a little dust double down there. I would have a dust devil just as I'm trying to do accuracy. <laughs> ah, good old Murphy. All right, last one. Yeah, so you can see that shot opened up. So it's still not bad for regular ball ammunition. It's not meant to be high end or precise. Keeping yourself under a one MOA grouping is huge because those small changes turn into big changes downrange. You can't be within 100 yards of a heavily armored vehicle and be like, hold on a second, let me put in my armor piercing round and see how this will work. You gotta touch someone at a long distance. So this needs to hold accuracy 
out to longer distances. And 500 yards is definitely getting out there. Let's see if we can hold a similar group at 500 yards on steel. And you'll be able to hear it. That steel plate from TA Targets definitely lets you know it's being hit. All right. Two propane tanks for the 50 BMG. Oh boy. This should be, should be interesting. There you are. <laughs> Well, uh, it disappears real fast. Think one of the propane tanks landed way out there. <laughs> All right, back to it. Always pick up your trash. Don't be a douchebag. Found him. <laughs> Look at that. So 50 cal just opens these things up so fast that all the propane leaves instantly, making a instant fireball, while other smaller projectiles poke a small hole and causes them to spin around. This one was about 60 yards that way, and this one was about 90 yards that way. Yeah, so, hmm. Maybe I'll do a giveaway for our patrons with these, I don't know, little mementos. No, I, no actually, I'm serious. We'll do that. Do a giveaway over on my Patreon account, patreon.com forward slash GY6. Uh, we'll do a giveaway of these for those who want them. If you don't want them, then you know don't enter. But also, I'll be giving away a lot of brass that I shot in this video and other videos using this HTI 50 cal. If you want me to, I can sign the brass casing and then send it to the winners. So let me know. If you want to, head over to patreon.com forward slash GY6. There should be a giveaway going on right now once this video goes live. And if you're watching this in the future, it's probably over. So, eh. But we're probably going to do other giveaways like giving away guns and ammo and all sorts of fun gift cards and memorabilia in future videos. So still head over there. <laughs>50 miles to the gallon on this hog. Traded the shag and wagon straight up for it. If you don't know what that movie is, we cannot be friends. Sorry for the uh, footage and the audio. I'm filming with a cell phone because I'm not carrying one of my big ass camera rigs all the way down range. This is first person or second, third person. Look at that. 
Don't know if this cell phone's gonna pick that up, but stunning, gorgeous. You and me, he walking, baby. Uh, uh, yeah. Ah. Gotta watch out, watch out for the whistle pig holes. <laughs> Blow out a tendon or something, or a ligament. I'm losing my mind, it's too damn hot. 200 yards, 250 yards to go. Drank like 20 of these bottles today. Pissing like a racehorse, but you know, gotta stay hydrated. I'm here at the steel. I think it just knocked over. Ah, 50 cal rounds, you big son of a bitch. All right. Oh, I'm tired of running all over the place. See how that two by four handles the next shot of 50 cal. Uh, cooling off a little bit, the clouds are coming in. That vapor's a little bit better, but still it's pretty harsh. Hmm. I think I might have nicked it. I think I'm holding over too far. Let me try it one more time. Yeah, buddy. All right, so I think I got my holdover point. Hitting a little high into the left. Let's adjust this. Uh, let's see here. Let's go down a couple inches. There it is. Much better hold point. All right, come on, baby. Nice. Well, I think I destroyed the uh, two by four. So um, those last two shots, there was one shot. The first shot we took was a little bit to the right. I adjusted a little bit too much and I was hitting high and left. Dialed it in, found a holdover point, took two shots. We'll see where those two shots ended up because we destroyed the target. So <laughs> let's go take a peek. Cue the drone. All right, so impact points. Um, I hit one here. This is that far right, almost parallel with the center line. Eh, not great, but then we had two impacts up here. One here that I heard zing off and I thought I just nicked it. That's that impact. Second follow-up shot was that impact. So we're looking at, you know, about five inches or so between those two spaces, which is one MOA out to 500 yards. Then the follow-up shots where I thought I adjusted the windage better, which I did, but still brought it over a little bit more. Still, right here, five or six inches, still staying within that one MOA, maybe slightly out of one MOA. But at the end of the day, this gun is meant for armored vehicles. And you know, it's, it's hard target. It's in the name, H-T-I. It's meant to hit bigger objects that have armor on it. But also if you want to occasionally plank away at something smaller, turn it into red mist, this gun's gonna be able to do that. Uh, having a solid one MOA group out to 500 yards, I can't wait to test it at 1,000, but it sure beats the heck out of most 50 BMGs and being able to throw it across your back if you need to and just hump it around, this will be simple. Go check out Desert Tech. They have all sorts of stuff going on at their company you wanna go check out. They make fantastic weapons and I think I'm gonna to have to get my hands on a few more of theirs to test those out thoroughly as well. All right, enough rambling. Andrew with GY6 Vids once again. Thanks for watching guys. Please give the thumbs up, it helps a lot. It lets me know you're liking the videos. Let me know you enjoy what's being put out in that video. It's kind of your rating system. Also come say hi on social media, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, at GY6Vids. Come follow me, come give me a direct message, come comment in a picture or a video or whatever you see on those platforms. Can't say it enough. Thanks a lot to our patrons at patreon.com forward slash GY6. You guys, you guys, you just, you it. You know, if there was, if there was something that was it, you're it. I'm humbled by your generosity and your small one to whatever amount of dollars per month uh, are adding up and they're helping a lot for funding these productions. It's not cheap. It takes a lot of time, a lot of camera rigs. And I want to say thank you very much. My hat's off to you guys. Thanks again. I will see you on the next episode. Later.